Good morning, everyone. Can you can you hear us from MSET? Morning, here in the Godfrey. Yeah, Good morning, British High <laughs> Commission. Hearing you. Thank you very much. Confirming audio, Godfrey. Morning, everyone. Good morning. I am Faye Ellington, your moderator for the official launch of National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Welcome to all our panelists, to all of you who are joining virtually, and I know more will be coming on during the course of the morning. The panelists, you will be introduced just before your various presentations. Welcome to everyone. This time will be time well spent. In fact, you should consider the time spent at this virtual event as an investment in your safety and security for yourself, your family, your company, and indeed Jamaica. Cybersecurity Awareness Month every October is a collaboration between the government and the private industry to raise awareness about digital security and, and for everyone to protect their personal data from digital forms of and communications for organizations to talk to their employees and customers about staying safe online. Now in its 19th year, Cybersecurity Awareness Month continues to build momentum and impact across the nation. The Jamaica Cyber Incident Response Team, JASSERT, is a legacy of the objectives of the National Cybersecurity uh, Strategy in 2015. In 2019, the month of activities was adopted and is now marked locally by a focused series of events that are aimed at improving public education and raising awareness in respect of cybersecurity. The theme for this month is cybersecurity is everybody's responsibility. I'm certain you'll agree with that. Now, our speakers have been drawn from, among others, the security forces, high commissioners, banking, telecoms, academia, and, of course, the government, specifically from the Ministry of Science, Energy, and Technology. And I am really very happy, although not seated next to me in this room, to acknowledge the Minister with Portfolio Responsibility for this, that's the Honourable Daryl Bowles. Also with me, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the head of the Jamaica Cyber Incident Response Team, Jassert, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Godfrey Sterling. I think it would be important for me to give a little bit of history about this. About all of our, almost all of our devices, including this from which I'm reading, are being connected over the internet, which means both personal and business data can be easily accessed. This gives attackers increased opportunity to steal data and compromise systems. As such, security best practices, increased knowledge and understanding of the vulnerabilities and how we can keep our information safe is a start to developing better cyber hygiene. By the end of this event, some of us will be exposed to new terms and vocabulary like cyber hygiene, and we should have a good insight into the state of global cyber, regional cyber, and Jamaica's cybersecurity ecosystem. It is hoped that this event will raise your awareness to cyber risks and threats, and that you'll be introduced to practices and tips for keeping you, keeping us all, all of us safe online. Well, with that said, it is now time to hear from the head of the Jamaica Cyber Incident Response Team, JASSERT, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Godfrey Sterling. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Auntie Faye, and thank you for joining us this morning. Good morning to the members of the panel or speakers this morning, as well as to those who are joining us as attendees in cyberspace. I am Lieutenant Colonel Retired Godfrey Sterling, the head of the Jamaica Cyber Incident Response Team here at the Ministry of Science, Energy and Technology. 
Jamaica Cyber Incident Response Team is a very small team, but one which has been resourced and equipped to not just manage the maturing of Jamaica's cybersecurity ecosystem as we seek to execute under the four pillars of the 2050 National Cybersecurity Strategy. We're also involved very intimately in providing guidance to businesses and individuals alike as we seek to raise the level of cyber hygiene that Faye just spoke about. In very serious terms, we've switched the focus this year from the individual, and we're paying a little bit more attention to the business, the body corporate, whether you are in the public or private sector. And we're doing that with particular emphasis on the micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises, because looking at the incidents to which we have responded over the course of the year, the MSME sector suffer from the same challenges whenever we are responding on site. Among these, include the, you have the malconfiguration of software. You have the use of illicit software. You have challenges with respect to how you respond to incidents of a security nature on your network. And so when we look at this, we recognize that there has to be a greater focus for the entity, the corporate entity, on training your employees to recognize certain scams, such as phishing. Social engineering is not new, ladies and gentlemen. However, phishing have grown significantly in sophistication, security footprint. A lot of it is essentially what many professionals in cyber would call a dead-end job. And so we're encouraging persons through this month's activities to look at how you can manage the improvement of that footprint or the creation of it so that you can have a career in cyber in a lot of the businesses in Jamaica. We're seeing enterprising Jamaicans start to offer cybersecurity as a service, and we laud this effort. However, as companies, you have to ensure that when you contract the services, you're doing so, you're contracting persons who are trained and certified, persons who understand what they're doing and are not creating greater challenges for you. Ladies and gentlemen, we saw 2021 close out with a number of spectacular cyber incidents globally. And what we would have seen from the SolarWinds exercise through to the Colonial Pipeline and the BSG Cyber Act was the fact that Irrespective of where you operate within industry, you are at risk. And so even though 20 years ago, the deputy head of the FBI said, it's not a matter of if you will become a cybersecurity victim, it's a matter of when. And that time, ladies and gentlemen, is now more than ever very much upon us. And so as we look regionally, we've not been spared. For those of us who took the opportunity to read Fortinet's half yearly report, on cybersecurity within the Latin American and Caribbean region, we would have recognized that there were significant challenges. We look at the Costa Rica, where the entire government was held at ransom for many weeks. We look to Guatemala and some of the other Latin American countries, which just three weeks ago, one ransomware group dumped over 10 gigabytes of information from their militaries, their departments of defense or the interior, in fact, their entire government in some cases on the dark web. And this is something that we have to bear in mind that oftentimes it is not just the compromise within the entity that leads to challenges, but when employees and with the pandemic hoisting a new requirement for learning and working where the security perimeter that a lot of security professionals were used to in a brick and steel building has disappeared we have significantly widened the attack surface and the attack vectors have become many and varied. Jamaica has not been spared. We saw spectacularly in March, the ransomware attack at NCU. And one of the challenges that we face here is that the issues that the micro, small and medium-sized enterprises are facing, some of the bigger enterprises are facing. So as we get into the discussions today, are into the addresses today by persons from the different areas who are here represented, I would like us all to think, how can we individually and collectively work together
to mature the cybersecurity ecosystem here in Jamaica while building capacity and improving the capability of all involved. I look forward to the address of all here and I thank you all for coming. Welcome again and let's have some good discourse. Thank you so much, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Godfrey Sterling. You've given quite an overview in terms of how we should be going and looking at things historically, looking at what, what has been happening with cyber security. As you made the quotation from the FBI head, not a matter of if, but when, and so, you know, that's very troubling. Particularly, I'm happy that the focus is on micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises, because they have to use the, the devices and online and internet and websites like anybody else. And sometimes they do need a little bit of hand-holding and guidance where these things are concerned. Cyber security perimeter, when we hear these terms and cyber incidents globally and the security footprint a dead end for some of us, we're in trouble then, big trouble. Anyway, let's hear more about uh, uh, from the different uh, panelists on this morning from representing the uh, British High Commission. And uh, esteemed guests, colleagues, friends, all protocols observed, I hope. Thank you ever so much for inviting me along this morning at this uh, important launch. And it's great to see a wide cross spectrum group of government and private sector, academia, international allies and friends coming together to highlight the increasing role that cybersecurity is playing in both our personal and professional lives. It's a statement of fact that as more and more of our lives are going online, whether through our work, our study or our social activity, and the multitude of devices that we're using to rely on, the internet expands. So we're increasing the potential surface area of cyber attacks, uh, just referred to by um, the Lieutenant Colonel there. And this isn't a hypothetical threat. So we only have to look at the recent ransomware attacks in Costa Rica, the shutdown of massive stores in Trinidad, the current hacktivist campaign running across Chile, Mexico, El Salvador and Peru, to know that this is a growing issue right across the Americas. And I even, I mean, we talk about per, as a personal level, uh, somebody attempted to scam me with a quite uh, convincing um, attack last week. So it's, it's a very, very live issue. So in, in the UK last year, we saw our healthcare sectors heavily targeted for information on our COVID-19 response and the colonial pipeline incident. We saw the effects of an attack on a nation's critical national infrastructure all too clearly. But although we face dedicated, capable, well-resourced and innovative adversaries from both the criminal fraternity and from certain hostile states, we aren't powerless against this threat. Um, governments, the logical and technical mitigations and developing the national cyber literate workforces we all need for the future. But as a starting point, good cybersecurity can begin with us, the end user, and a little bit of education, coupled with some practical steps, which can dramatically reduce our chances of becoming a victim. And thanks to the education that I had, I was. So for this reason, this year's global theme of it's easy to stay safe online is a simple but deceptively powerful statement. Jamaica's own message of cybersecurity is everybody's responsibility helps to get that critical point across succinctly and effectively to do. To further support this idea, I'd like to highlight also getsafeonline.org.jm, which is a UK funded website providing free information on ways that Jamaican citizens, families and businesses can stay safe on the internet. So that's getsafeonline.org.jm. Here at the British High Commission, we're proud of the work that we've done so far to support Jamaica's growing cyber expertise and we look forward to identifying ways to increase that collaboration. Back in 2015, we partnered with Oxford University on a cyber maturity model study. And now, seven years on, we'd like to offer the new updated version of this study as a valuable tool to benchmark Jamaica's progress today and to help identify strategic areas for focus and investment. We really hope this is a project that you will welcome in the immediate future. 
slightly further afield, we're also working with the OAS to enhance the America's CSIRT network, of which Jamaica is a key member, which aims to enhance the delivery and usability of threat intelligence throughout the region. For Jamaican diplomats and other OAS partners, we've also contracted OAS to run further iterations of their cyber diplomacy training, helping to inform policy colleagues on the key issues within international cyber governance. The UK as a responsible and democratic cyber power sees Jamaica as a strong ally in the pursuit of a peaceful, secure and prosperous shared digital future. And we look forward very much to continuing to work with you. Thank you once again for the opportunity to be here today. And we wish you a very successful National Cyber Security Awareness Month to make it a big success again. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, Ms. Judith. two things that you've put on the agenda that we need to pay attention to. The importance of, and this is for all of us, particularly the focus on micro, small and medium sized enterprises, the importance of a cyber literate workforce. For raising that, and might I remind us of the uh, uh, GetSafeOnline.org.jm. GetSafeOnline.org.jm. Move to yet another High Commissioner. This time, the High Commissioner of Canada in Jamaica, Her Excellency Mrs. Emina Tudakovic. We welcome her. So let's have a watch. Yeah. Uh, We, 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 we to stop that for the moment and try to get that video playing the way All right, I think to work on that and ensure that we are able to bring that to you without the challenges that we're facing now. So we could just support that for the time being. These things happen when we go virtual, all kinds of exciting things happen. All right, we just need to stop that one for the time being. We hope to return to Her Excellency Mrs. Emilia Tudakovic, High Commissioner of Canada in Jamaica, as soon as we have that sorted out. But we do have online uh, representing the Organization of American States, uh, Resident Representative, Office of the OS, General Secretary in Jamaica, uh, Mrs. Janelle Van Glen Nee Weagle. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, we are looking forward to your presentation. Thank you, Auntie Faye. <laughs> Honorable, <laughs> Honorable Minister Foss, P.S. Palmer, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Sterling, Honorable guests, members of the Diplomatic Corps, on behalf of the General Secretariat of the Organization of American States, 
I greet you warmly and thank the Ministry of Science, Energy, and Technology. Share this. Can you hear me? Yes, we are. We are hearing you. Sorry. <laughs> Let me go again. Yes. On behalf of the Sec General Secretariat of the Organization of American States, I greet you warmly and thank the Ministry of Science, Energy, and Technology for including the OES once again at its launch of Cybersecurity Month with another well-thought-out program full of timely discussions and activities. The Secretariat of the Inter-American Committee Against Terrorism, SICTE, of the OAS has been supporting the government of Jamaica on various cybersecurity-related initiatives for over a decade now. The Jamaica Cyber Incident Response Teams, JCERT, has been an active member of CICTE's hemispheric network of public cyber incident response teams, CSERT, as the Canadian of the British High Commissioner just mentioned in OAS member states since 2016. As of September 2022, the CSERT Americas network includes over 200 cybersecurity specialists from 33 CSERTs from 20 countries of the region and serves a collaborative platform to share cyber threat intelligence 24 hours a day. Through 24-7 security, they strengthen their cyber incident identification, response, and recovery capabilities. Some of our more recent collaborations with Jamaica include the Threat Defense Challenge, which was organized by OAS CICTE in 2020 with the support of JCERT, the Ministry of Science, Energy and Technology, and TrendMicro. The initiative promoted the development of cybersecurity skills in the information and communications technologies industry. Furthermore, CICTE had the opportunity to support the government of Jamaica in the development of the cyber, the national cybersecurity. Most recently in 2021, OAS CITE provided technical support and collaboration with the National Cybersecurity Task Force throughout the revision process of the National Cybersecurity Strategy to ensure that Jamaica has a comprehensive and multi stakeholder strategy that continues to respond to the country's evolving cybersecurity needs and priorities. As part of our continued support to JCERT to raise national awareness of cyber risks and share a safe on our entitled internet governance in a data protected world in November, 2021. All these efforts among many others are a clear sign of Jamaica's commitment to building cybersecurity resilience and the continued commitment of the Organization of American States to support Jamaica in its efforts. We offer our sincere congratulations to these timely and important advances and wish you a productive and cyber security month. Thank you. And these points that you have raised are important for all of us to consider. Thank you for your support and your participation. We hope that you'll be able to stay with us for a bit of the time, if not all of the time. Thank you. Organization of American States represent, resident representative, Mr. Janelle Van Glennen Weagle. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, we're hearing uh, from the, our friends in the High Commissions and the OAS, but we do have a focus that we need to place on what we do and how we do it from the Jamaican perspective. At this time, it is indeed my pleasure to introduce the Chief of Defense Staff of the Jamaica Defense Force, Rear Admiral Antoinette Weems-Gorman, to bring you her views on this launch, this conference, and what it is that we need to be focused on. Chief of Defense Staff, good morning, ma'am. Good morning, Faye. Well, thank you all very much. Uh, from the ministry for inviting the Jamaica Defense Force to be a part of your launch. 
core distinguished panelists and guests, good morning. Cyber Security Month is a reminder of the importance of the digital sphere and the timely recognition that because it is an ever evolving space, navigating it is safely is important. I am pleased to participate in this year's National Cybersecurity Awareness Month 2022 launch and subsequent activities. I believe the chosen theme, cybersecurity is everyone's responsibility, is very relevant due to the increasing way in which digital technology is being used within our society. Our theme of cybersecurity being everyone's business is well packaged, as mentioned by the High Commissioner, as Jamaica also joins other countries around the globe who are also celebrating National Cybersecurity Awareness Month under the overarching narrative, it is easy to stay safe online. Recent statistics on global internet usage shows that as of April, 2022, there are more than 5 billion internet users worldwide, which represents approximately 63% of the global population. It is therefore evident that technology is an influential force in how we conduct our daily lives. One of the results of the COVID-19 pandemic is the increased use of online modalities, which we saw with students being online for school and some businesses moving their entire operations to the digital space. The shift to online platforms for work and school has also highlighted the need for appropriate ICT infrastructure coupled with the relevant experience to facilitate safe and secure movement online. The increased digital footprint online has also expanded the attack surface for cyber threat actors. Cyber criminals have become even more organized with the use of advanced technological mechanisms to access and exploit our personal data for their illegal use. As a military then, our organizations are unusually affected by advanced persistent threats which utilize highly sophisticated methodology to gain access to our networks and steal sensitive data. One of the JDF's mandates is to foresee possible threats to Jamaica. Therefore, we have been taking steps to not only improve our own cyber security posture, but to work with the other government entities to build the needed capacities through the establishment of a Institute of Cyber Science. It is envisaged that this institute will provide the national capacity to train and develop the human resource necessary to counter current and emerging cyber threats. As we observe Cybersecurity Awareness Month, it is my cyber hygiene are not only emphasized throughout this month, but become part of our lifestyle. As a country, our response to achieve cyber resilience must be deliberate, well-researched, and collaborative to ensure protection of personal data and our critical infrastructure. We must arm ourselves with the knowledge to exert power over our collective security in cyberspace. I want to thank the Ministry of Science, Energy, and Technology for the invitation and then the opportunity to participate is not only in Cybersecurity Month, but as required in service to the holistic security of Jamaica. Thank you. Rear Admiral Antoinette Weems Gorman, the Chief of Defense Staff of the Jamaica Defense Force. And uh, the idea of an Institute of Cyber Science is an excellent one, and I'm anticipating that uh, coming to fruition. Uh, you made a very important point at the start of your presentation, and that is as of April 22, 2022, as of April 2022, more than 5 billion internet users exist worldwide. That means that there are more than 5 billion um, uh, uh, possibilities of cyber attacks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because if we have more than 5 billion internet users worldwide as of April 2022, and yes, as a military organization, you've got to be sophisticated and ahead of the game. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your presentation. From the military, we now go to the Jamaica Constabulary Force. And again, 
uh, the uniformed forces and in particular the police uh, anywhere in the world have to be ahead of the game where these things are concerned. And you'll be hearing from Oak a little later on, but at this time, I am going to be introducing the Commissioner of Police, Major General Anthony Anderson. Is our commissioner there? All right, uh, we will work on that and ensure that uh, we are able to hear from the Commissioner of Police because this is very important for us to just hear from the police here in Jamaica what their focus, in, uh, focus is on and how they're going to contribute to this business of cyber hygiene. So then I'm going to move to the Office of Utilities Regulation and um, they have a, an awesome responsibility to regulate so many sectors in Jamaica that are of importance and to ensure that our rights are acknowledged and that we have the responsibility of the OUR is just to keep a tab on what is happening and ensure that Jamaicans are in fact getting what, they, what we agreed we should get. So Professor Alvin Wynn, Chairman of the Office of Utilities Regulation. I hope you're there and that you can join uh, us now. Good, good morning, morning uh, Madam Ellington. It is such a pleasure um, to be on this platform uh, and to hear you, our esteemed um, national moderator of all things that are good in Jamaica. It's wonderful to be in your company. Let me also acknowledge um, Lieutenant Sternin, um, Minister Vaz, Honorable Minister Vaz, uh, and of course, um, distinguished panelists. Um, uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be with uh, Janelle from the OAS, uh, British High Commissioner, uh, and um, Head of the Military, and all of those panelists that we will be with us. Uh, as you have rightly pointed out, uh, Madam MC, <clears throat> the Office of Utilities Regulation has a very important role to play in this process. Now, we have no, uh, within the office, we have no responsibility directly for cybersecurity, but we have a responsibility, if not adequately carried out, eliminates the need for cybersecurity to some extent. Uh, and of course, what do I mean by that? Uh, well, we, as, as you have pointed out, uh, Madam NC and others also pointed out, we have moved dramatically into cyber space uh, across the world. And it, it has tremendous efficiency associated with it. Um, as you pointed out, um, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, dramatized the fact that we're able to continue efficiently uh, to function even in the absence of uh, physical contact, um, but we're able to do so through electronic means. Uh, and these have proved to be very efficient. Of course, our cyberspace is completely anchored on utilities that are regulated uh, the OUR, because it is to try to have uh, telecommuting in the absence of efficient electricity generation and transmission. So we take our responsibility at the OUR, uh, and that responsibility includes uh, the regulating in the direction of uh, establishing modern and efficient utility uh, systems uh, in Jamaica. Uh, and, and currently, we are responsible for uh, the utilities that will include electricity generation, transmission, and distribution, telecommunications, uh, and water. Those are our three um, principal utility uh, responsibilities at the moment. And of course, two of those are so critical. And in the ancillary issue of four, that as we regulate our telecommunication sector in particular, uh, we need to ensure that those telecommunication systems are creating the platform, the mechanisms on which we can have more effective cybersecurity uh, systems 
in the country. Our telecommunications providers have a very important role in that process. And as has been pointed out, cyber security threats are very significant. And, and what I have been struck with as I have participated in training sessions uh, is, as our um, JDF leader pointed out, is the increasing sophistication of those who are seeking to attack. And it's really obvious why they would do that, because of course, information is the new goal. Uh, and, and you know, when, when banks were highly secured in the past and um, robbers would seek to attack them and they would say, well, obviously, you know, why are you attacking such secu highly secured institutions? And the response was obvious. Uh, that's where the money is. Well, the money is not in banks anymore. Uh, the money is entirely in cyberspace. And so and there are so many organizations, and I say organizations and not individuals, who are seeking to um, attack cyberspace and monetize that attack, either through ransomware uh, efforts or through the uh, acquisition of, of, of customer information uh, from which they can actually generate um, significant um, income flows. Uh, and so this is the context in which, especially in uh, a small open economy uh, like Jamaica, um, that is obviously going to be very vulnerable to any threats uh, and, and any concerns about, uh, about issues of security. And this is why we really appreciate the ministry's efforts to engage in this process of uh, awareness building uh, across uh, dangerous and almost existential threats associated with cybersecurity attacks. Uh, and so we at the OUR are committed um, to continuing our mandates of um, trying to ensure that through our regulatory processes, there is a modern and efficient telecommunications and electricity generation network, but we're also committed in that process um, to do anything that we can to improve the platform on which all of these uh, security response efforts are to be built. Uh, so you have our commitment, um, Madam MC, you have our commitment, um, and Minister, uh, and all those on the platform that the OUR will work uh, as um, aggressively as possible uh, to ensure that Jamaica's systems are compatible with the highest level of protection against cyber attacks. So having said that, I only can end by saying that I truly appreciate uh, this opportunity to represent the OUR in a strategic capacity um, because these are strategic issues for us uh, and to thank the ministry and all those who are um, spending their time on this issue, which is so absolutely critical, so important. Uh, and I just want to emphasize that you have the full commitment of the Office of Utilities Regulation and, and that we will do all that we can to make sure that Jamaica becomes one of the best protected uh, cyber spaces uh, that we have, because we do recognize that cyber activity is the is the mode of the future. We're not going to move back. We're going to go forward and we have to have, we have to ensure that our, our people have confidence that when they engage in cyber interaction, their information is protected and they will not be vulnerable to these phishing attacks and to other attacks that seek to um, displace them from their assets and from their information, which is today's goal. Thank you very much, Madam MC. Thank you very much, colleagues who have been a part of our part of this process. And you have the full commitment of the Office of Utilities Regulation. We thank you, Professor this. Alvin Wendt, Chairman of the Office of Utilities Regulation. And you know, I, I can't wait to hear from the bank because you made a very profound statement earlier on and you said that money's not in banks anymore. <laughs> what a 
money. We've come from money being onto the mattress to money in banks to money now in cyberspace. That is exactly what it is. Bitcoin, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Or I hope I'm not promoting anyone in particular. But um, thank you so very much for your contribution. I, I must tell you before I go to our next presenter. Uh, you have to be so careful with um, understanding how to manage, and particularly, I think, Lieutenant um, Colonel Sterling, we need to have some a focus on older people who are using the technology and from 70 and over who may need a little hand holding. A few weeks ago, uh, at various times of the night, I got calls coming from uh, 266 to 190 Three calls come in. Of course, I didn't answer. But Sorry. I used the call ID to say, no, me not know nobody in that part of the world who would be calling. And so we have to, because people could very pick up the phone and answer and, and could give information um, that would comp compromise them, you know? So this is how, this is the least of them, and, you know? And very, most certainly we can provide that sort of guidance if there are forums with senior persons or even individuals, we will assist where they request it. The Senior Citizens Association, perhaps we could do something there with them. And Senior Citizens Month went in September, am I correct? Yes, I believe so. All right, so that is something for the agenda. Thank you so very much again, Professor Alvin Wint. So I think we are going to now go to the Commissioner of Police before. So Mr. Hay, I'm putting you on hold for just a while from the Financial Investigation Division while we go to the Commissioner of Police. Uh, there was a little technical glitch, but we sorted that out. As uh, Professor Wynn said, there's sometimes a little hiccup here and there, but we've sorted that out. So could we welcome the Commissioner of Police, Major hey, General, yes. and, and this morning. Good morning, um, Faye and everyone else on the platform. Good morning to you all. Obviously, this business of uh, cybersecurity, cybercrime, and all matters cyber uh, impact us in pretty much everything that we do nowadays, from our own networks and the protection of those as we become more sophisticated in terms of our own technologies, but also the response ultimately to cybercrime and crimes are like any other crime. There's somebody that needs to be prosecuted and somebody who needs to be uh, pay the price of a punishment in some form of, or, or way. Now, obviously, in the cyber realm, sometimes the attacker, the person doing it, is not even in the country. And so our, in our discussions and discourse with our partners, it's very important that we have common understandings in law enforcement in various jurisdictions about not only the threat levels and the threats, but also responses uh, to those threats. Here, obviously, one of the main things that we look at is advanced credit fraud and all other such matters involved in what we broadly call a lot of scamming environment, which um, impacts not only the cyber realm, but has a direct transition into um, a certain amount of violence, movement of money, uh, movement of weapons that are associated with it. So that is that is probably the largest nexus uh, between what is happening in the cyber world and what is happening in our traditional uh, criminal world. The other aspect of it, of course, is that the communication forensic and cyber crime division, which their workload increases daily uh, there's pretty much no uh, crime now that does not involve some sort of device or some sort of uh, communication that takes place within the, the cyber uh, realm. And so their workload and their, um, their need for... I'm stuck is that a lot of things that were previously were invisible are now visible uh, through the same means. Now, for us, uh, and we are mindful, of course, that attacks on uh, we've got government facilities and things like police forces that tends to breach and so on are a significant 
threat to us. And so as we move, go through the process, and we're doing that as we speak, of putting um, our systems online with our station record management systems, that's the electronic diary process that they've spoken about for years, is now being rolled out. Uh, we're in three divisions and about five stations at the moment. Um, as that is done in our electronic case management system, we have the need to protect all of those networks and systems. And so have been working on both uh, things hand in hand, of course, which, which just leads to a little slower rollout than we would have thought would have been desirable. But um, nonetheless, uh, it's, we recognize that as we gather all this information and are able to analyze it uh, with technology, that we also protect that information and keep it uh, in really within the realm of those persons who need to see it and need to, to know it. Um, we established a technology branch some four years ago, and that is really to coordinate all of our technological uh, endeavors, including all matters of global information system and analyze it. All of that is part of our, our our whole push into this uh, cyber realm. And it's really about appropriate technology to improve our service delivery, even as we go through other processes like our um, ISO 9001 uh, certification that we received recently for some of our areas of the force. And they, the two things go hand in hand um, in, delivering that sort of cyber uh, protection and more than more probably more importantly from our perspective uh, a proper law enforcement response uh, to cyber threats and uh, cyber crime so we are uh, actually you know we look forward to what this month has to offer um, and the JCF will be uh, great partners for all of you who are involved in this process as we trod this path together. So thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Commissioner Police, Major General Anthony Anderson. You are absolutely right. We are trotting this path together. If you joined after the official start, which was promptly at 10, let me thank, thank you. Uh, a number of speakers have gone by, but there's just so much more to come. And I'm happy that the speakers have been sticking to the time that they were allotted. Wonderful. But, you know, the Commissioner of Police spoke about moving to electronic diaries for the Jamaica Constabulary Force, and we're happy to hear that. And he hinted that while we're looking at them paraphrasing at the efficiency of electronic diaries, then we have to now look at the need to protect and secure these diaries. And from time to time, you hear reports about medical everything, but many um, medical enterprises are doing that, which would make it more efficient, but you have to protect. So here we go. Did we have anybody from the Medical Association of Jamaica on this phone? No, I don't think we did. But we need to reach out to them as well. Thank you so very, very much. And um, we're moving now to Financial Investigations Division. And it is indeed my pleasure to introduce uh, Mr. Selvin Hay, the Chief Technical Director. And Mr. Hay, you have another perspective that I know you want to share with us as a matter of urgency. Yes, good morning. Is Mr. Hay there? I he was. Mr. Hay, are you there? Uh-huh, he's there. Oh, allow him to talk. So let us do that again. Uh, these things happen from time to time. Uh, and we do these virtual or these hybrid sessions. So as soon as we have Mr. Hayes up and in. Good morning. Mr. Hay, are you hearing me? Yes, you're making hay while the sun shines. Yes, madam. I'm moderator. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. We're looking forward to your presentation. I, are you seeing my video? Ah, no, we're not seeing a video. So you joined as an attendee. You joined as an attendee and not with a video. Um, would you like to... Uh, 
we are if you our technical to... person is working very very hard to facilitate that if so you wish what you could do is that we could work that out and then go to a previous video that we have a challenge with yes tell me what you want me to do uh, all right, assistant is watching. We're going to come back to you. Yes. But right now, we I want to return to the interview, or rather to the, you notice my broadcasting thing is on my head, the interview. I want to return to the presentation from the High Commissioner uh, of Canada in Jamaica, Her Excellency Mrs. Emina Tudakovic. So let's have a watch. Mr. Bob, the Governor Biles, Radical Women's Corpsman, Major General Anderson, Colonel Edwards, other distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. First of all, I'll uh, crash the game on the launch event from the National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. It's interesting and somewhat ironic that the same technology that allows them to reach people virtually has led to an increase, apparently, of over 600% in the cyber crime since the pandemic started. I'm sure none of us has ever, not like I did, perhaps this morning, been down a path or anything like that on a piece of paper that was sticking out by our computer. <laughs> it's interesting that remote work itself has led to more cyber crime, including common data and human rights in the past. The threats we face in cyberspace are complex and rapidly evolving. Governments, businesses, organizations, and citizens are vulnerable. With more of the economy and the same purposes being in the long run, it's wasted the time. Cybersecurity is a priority for Canada, just as it is for Geneva. Canada engages internationally to promote and protect a free, open, and secure cyberspace. This supports Canada's economic prosperity, online and online security, and helps advance Canadian values. Canada is interested in promoting rules based international order in cyberspace. Canada works on Within the Canadian government, international allies, including Jamaica, the private sector, and non government partners. Our interests in cyberspace include advocating for an open, free, and secure internet, enhancing international cooperation, and carry out norms and responsibility. Commissioner, Her Excellency, Mrs. Emina Tudakovic, uh, from um, representing, of course, Canada. And thanks for the partnership you shared with Jamaica. The High Commission here in Jamaica has shared with the Jamaican people and government over the very many years. And yes, we appreciate hearing about the Canadian perspective and what you've done as a country and where it is going. Uh, do we have now the... We're going to go to passport. Yes? Oh, we have Mr. Hay now? Mr. Hay, we had a little challenge getting you on earlier on with your video, but I think you should be just about ready now. That's the Chief Technical Director of the Financial Investigations Division. I'm curious to hear what you're coming up on now in terms of cyber threats in Jamaica and how you're handling them. Mr. Hay. Good morning again. Morning. I can see you and I can. Thank you, Madam um, Moderator, uh, Minister Vaz. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you, Colonel Sterling and your team for, for inviting me and as well as to, to facilitate and coordinate this. Am I? I don't know what is happening. Are you hearing me? Yes, we are hearing you. We are hearing you very well. Okay, thank you. I don't know what is happening. I hope it's not a cyber attack. <laughs> okay, so again, I want to say good morning and, and thank, thank you for inviting me. 
and thank you for coordinating this 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 forum and this week of activity this month of activities i think it's very timely and i think as as um, other speakers have said i think the, the theme is very well thought out and very appropriate for what is happening in today's society and um, well across the world in terms of the exponential increase in the use of technology and um, several major cyber attacks that we have been privy to um, across various systems and um, major entities across the world. The goal, the goal of cybersecurity is to provide a, a risk-free and secure environment in which Jamaica can um, carry out its business. As Lieutenant Colonel uh, Sterling mentioned earlier, it is not a matter of if, but when. And as several speakers have, have uh, mentioned, the use of technology and our cyber footprint have increased exponentially. And um, so too, I think, the, the vulnerabilities. The global estimated cost of cyber attacks in 2021 is over six trillion US dollars, which is, ladies and gentlemen, is more costly than the entire global illegal drug trade. Effectively, the effective cyber Security requires effective cybersecurity requires a sustained effort that encompasses not only critical infrastructure security, application security, network security, cloud security, Internet of Things security, penetration testing, and incident management, but also employee behavior, third-party risk, and other potential vulnerabilities. So it is a comprehensive approach that is required, ladies and gentlemen. Cybercrime is the conduct of illegal activities such as money laundering, fraud, identity theft, lottery scamming, the use of electronic systems, or anti-money laundering, countering of financing of terrorism or AML CFT regime consists of policies, laws, regulations, geared towards prevention and detection of these crimes. Therefore, going forward, the future of cybersecurity and AML, which combat similar targets, must be considered hand in hand. Security threats to the financial systems are growing, and we are all, and we all must cooperate protected. In February, President International Monetary Fund warned that major, a major cyber attack could trigger a serious financial crisis. The Financial Stability Board also warned that a major cyber incident, if not properly managed, could seriously disrupt financial systems, including critical implications. The potential economic cost of such events can be immense. It is a security risk that originates from within the organization. It typically, an individual, it typically is an individual that can be considered an insider who belongs to a company or organization and uses their accessibility to exploit the organization's information, whether intentionally or unintentionally. That is why our compliance departments have to be effective and efficient because if we are not quite careful, our greatest enemy can be within that department. The one we rely on the most, we rely on the most to keep us safe in this regard. The whistleblower is a good tool to fight this enemy. So too, the distribution of trust among 
more than one party to force collaboration. So we have to we have to be always we have to always be switched on to these opportunities and make best use of them. Inside our talks are times at times social organizational issues that cannot be countered by technological means alone. Ladies and gentlemen, is something that we really need to pay attention to. Traditional safeguards tend to focus on external threats and are always capable of identifying the threat, but not always seeing the one emanating from within. So why do we encourage responsible behavior in cyberspace? And why do we encourage the enabling of two-factor and multi-factor authentication? We also encourage more focused and deliberate attention on the inside of the threat and implementing of measures in strengthening our regimes and our systems against outside the threat while locking in sometimes a more deadly one inside. In concluding, ladies and gentlemen, as we move forward into the future, uh, we depend more and more on technology and the use of IT, ICT to conduct business. We have to, con we have to create a culture of cyber competence and awareness, therefore continuous training and accountability are key. Building cybersecurity capacity requires focusing on providing assistance where it is needed, and I've heard that spoken of earlier, as well as throughout comprehensive cybersecurity strategy. This is paramount. There is no way around this than to forge ahead in this reality, knowing that it is required what is required and prepare to do it. I sincerely hope that it activities throughout this month will help to galvanize action towards this end of our time. Enemy within, the enemy outside cannot enter. I'm going to borrow that one. I'll give you royalties for it. <laughs> Thank you so very, very much. But that's, a, I mean, in your own personal situation at home, right? If there's no enemy within, the enemy outside cannot enter. Thank you so much, Mr. Selvin Hay of the Financial Investigation Division as the Chief Technical Director there. We really appreciate your input. And now we're going to move over to the Passport Immigration and Citizenship Agency. And that again is a key agency that has to ensure that everything is protected in such a, you have to lock it down. You have to put it in a warm, or rather, you have to put it in a pan with a very tight lid. But I do use both my languages. You have to put it in a warm pan with a tight lid. All the information that you have at the Passport Immigration and Citizenship Agency. And the Chief Executive Director can tell us about the, the various plans, programs, policies that they have in place to ensure that no one's private information can escape, either because there's carelessness, ignorance, or hmm, deliberate action. So Mr. Andrew Winter, how are you? Welcome, sir, we are happy to have you. Mr. Winter, are you there? You are there, Mr. Winter, so we'd like to hear you. He's working on something to make sure that the threat doesn't affect the speaker at this time. So um, communicate with us if you can, Mr. Winter. Is he still there? Yes, he's there? Yes, he is. Yes, Mr. Winter, are you hearing us? And if you are hearing us, then maybe you need to unmute so we can hear Yes, you. I'm hearing you. Are you hearing me? Oh, Mr. Winter, how are you do? Mr. Winter, can you hear me now? Ah, yes, I'm here. There you are, your wonderful you? gold shirt, bringing sunshine and light to us this morning on an overcast day. It's over to you, sir. Thank you. Um, first, I'd like to thank everyone for this opportunity to be part of this um, very important day today. And to the Honorable Minister and the um, team from MSET, this is really a very important subject that you are now bringing to the fore. 
as the world and many of its operation move towards digitization and toward digitizing its operations, it is very important that we It's very important that we appreciate as much as technology is helping us, as much as technology is helping us, it can also be a very serious threat to us. Technology is impacting our lives in many ways, shape and form in actually everything we do. And here at the Passport Immigration and Citizenship Agency, technology is becoming even more and more integrated in our operations. Many of you know when you come to the airports, you are seeing automated kiosks that are now processing passengers. We are going to be upgrading our passport information. We have our passport renewal system online. And as such, it is important that we appreciate how important technology is to assist the consumer or the customer in making their life easier. But we have to remain cognizant of the threat that it can also create because many persons know if they are not aware of the system or the computers they are using to know that persons can hack into these things even though it makes their life easier it also makes them much more vulnerable and they have to be more aware of the importance of cyber security as we look at many of our crimes now, we are now moving into the realm of cyber crime. And as such, we now have to prepare our systems and protect our systems, which have persons' data and information. And it's a critical thing because of the identity theft is one of the biggest crimes in the world which is in place that will prevent persons from being able to access person's information and use it for nefarious things. The earlier speaker, Mr. He mentioned um, cyber terrorism. And we also have to be very cognizant of malicious attacks, um, ransomware, and things which destabilize your operations. Because when our border comes and persons are able to enter the so it is very important that we pay very close attention and fully appreciate the importance of our nation's cyber infrastructure and how important all of us have a part to play in protecting that cyber infrastructure from any external threat or internal threat. And we must appreciate them, the part that we have to play to ensure that our success or the success that we desire in any future development along cyber security is taken into consideration. I really cannot say how important this is. And I'm really happy to see that we are now raising this to this level. And we will take it now, not just in the public sector, but the private sector, and even regionally, to ensure that all of us play our part in ensuring that our infrastructure is placed, is safe. Because if PICA doesn't play their part and a cyber criminal is able to enter, to Pika, it can compromise the entire system.
if the banks are not playing their part and the criminal enter there, it will compromise the entire system. We all have a part to play in ensuring that we secure all nodes and all aspects of the infrastructure to ensure that the country is safe. We have seen where ransomware shuts down entire countries and we cannot under appreciate or undervalue the impact that can have on Jamaica if our infrastructure is compromised. So I really like to express my gratitude and my appreciation for us, for the efforts to raise the level of awareness so that we all understand the importance of this. To the person who's a security guard, to the person who is an attendant in an office. So it's not only the people who are the administrative roles that we should involve in, involve in this matter. Moving on now to the business of telecoms. And we know, we know, we, we get, get all the phishing email and we get the calls from Europe and we don't know anybody there. And right now, I'd like to introduce uh, um, Director of Regulatory Affairs, Mr. Charles Douglas at Cable and Wireless Jamaica. We call them Flo. Mr. Douglas. Thank you, Madam Moderator, for your warm welcome. I'd just like to <clears throat> acknowledge all the persons on call. Minister of Science, Energy and Technology, Anil Darrell Vaz, I'm looking for him. He may not be here yet. He may be. British High Commissioner, Commissioner of Jamaica, Her Excellency Judith Slater. Canadian High Commissioner of Jamaica, Her Excellency Emina Tudakovic. Resident Representative of the Office of the OAS General Secretary in Jamaica, Janelle Bland Glan Welgel. Chief of Defense Staff, Rear Admiral Anthony Wiz Mogarman. Commissioner of Police, Major General Anthony Anderson, Chairman of the OER Professor Wint, and Chief Executive Officer of PICA that we just heard from, Andrew Winter, Chief Technical Director of Financial Sur Investigations Division, Selvin Hay, President of the Bank As Association, um, Septimus Blake, Executive Director of Jamaica Institute of Financial Services, Darlene Jones, Governor of Bank of Jamaica, Richard Biles, Associate Dean UWI, Dr. Kurt, Curtis Busby Earl, and all other guests online and members of the media. I, I felt good morning to everyone, but particularly obligated to, to just read all those introductions besides paying respects to the individual, but it really underscores the collective effort that is required in order to protect um, Jamaica from cyber threats. It's an all hands on deck situation. I, I wanted that to be, to be evident to all online and all our listeners. Flo is being represented under the brand of Cable and Wireless Business this morning because that's the part of our organization which powers much of industry. And we are just elated to be invited to speak at this launch of Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Um, we are the largest internet provider um, in the country. And so we carry the most over the top services backed by our fiber fast network. And as such, we have a vested interest um, in people, see people online safe and all these um, you know, internet facilities, cloud services safe as much as to keep them connected. As been discussed on the call, we, we too are seeing and hearing the statistics. Um, cyber threats are so pervasive that they're estimated to cost the world $10.5 trillion by 2025. So Faye, it's hard to say what it will cost to, to protect our institutions, but we know that it's going to cost a lot, lot more not to do so. Um, and so, you know, the business case has already been made. <laughs> Approximately 37% of global organizations have said that during 2021, they were the victim of some form of ransomware attack. And here in, in Jamaica, and retired Lieutenant Colin Galbraith, who is the head of CERT, can uh, validate is that they have had more than 700 reports of cybercrime right here in Jamaica. 
Now, CNW Business, we are the ones that provide, along with other players, provide products and services to empower clients to um, mitigate threats. And that's, we, we, we treasure that role, that privilege. And it's one that we, we need to, we are resolved to um, serving well. Why our clients include government ministries and departments and agencies, financial institutions, and their you know, affiliate entities, um, entities in the hospitality business and business process outsourcing industries. So we're providing solutions, we're providing processes, and we have to be there to also support in securing these from cyber threats. So true, we may not be in those industries, but we're integrated, we're part and parcel of, of powering the sort of economic framework of the country. It's, it's also a fact that Flow Business, which is our complementary brand to CNW Business, which focuses not just on large enterprise organizations, but we do, we, we focus on micro, small and medium sized enterprises. And they too have the need for similar software and other tools, but, but you know, scaled for them so that it's affordable and not just that, but practical to their needs. And it, which may vary from, from other large enterprises. Uh, is more than just providing the robust systems, but it also includes, as has been mentioned so far during our discussions, um, um, cyber security education for all users. And I will, will share another quote, which I think it's, it's, it's so telling. It, it says that um, cryptographer Bruce Shinner, he says, your hack systems, but professionals hack people within. So the systems can be really robust, but um, people can compromise these systems. And that has to be front and center. So I agree with all who said regular sensitization ses sessions within organizations aimed at educating employees about cybersecurity, it cannot be overemphasized. At Flow, we are not just talking, but we are also um, backing up our talk. We're walking the walk. Today, as we, I speak, um, we're hosting an internal session for over 1,000 staff members to sensitize them about cyber threats and what we can do to safeguard ourselves, but also our customers. On October 12th and um, 19th, we will also be hosting public seminars on cybersecurity that will feature former hacker turned US government ally, Hector Monsegur as the keynote speaker. And these are just a few of the ways in which we are helping to spread the word about the importance of cybersecurity. In closing, again, I wanna thank the Ministry of Science, Energy and Technology and the Jamaica Cyber Incident Response Team headed by retired Lieutenant Colin Godfrey for inviting CNW Business to be part of today's launch and the wider months of activities. We do feel it a privilege to be here among this August group of government entities and, and other corporates. And uh, we endorse the calendar of Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Um, we endorse the events organized. And we encourage all to fully participate. We'll um, spread the word. And um, especially as we have been discussing within the enterprise and government spaces. So here's to a successful and insightful month of activities. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Mr. Douglas, Strauss Douglas, Director of Regulatory Affairs, Cable and Wireless Jamaica. We call it Flow. What well, hello. Let me congratulate you because you just said that today you are sensitizing over 1,000 members of your employees on cybersecurity. And I must tell you, Faye, if you don't get 100% correct participation, you have to be keep doing the training and the, the test until you do. The pass mark is 100%. And that makes absolutely sense. You know, years ago, I heard a quotation, and that is, if you think training is expensive, try ignorance. And you said earlier on that if I think the cost, and you didn't quite say that way, I'm saying it, the cost to um, ensure that your business is protected, the cost, if you don't do it, is much more. What? 10.5 trillion by 2025 for cyber attacks? 
It's a lot of money. Thank you for your input. Have a good day. Great, we are moving on. I'm enjoying this. I'm learning so much. I hope you're learning a lot too. How many people we have there now? 32? You should have been passing the word around, man. Right, we are moving now to the Jamaica Bankers Association. See ya? The bankers have lots of challenges that they have had to be negotiating where the sole business of security and identity theft and all of this is concerned. And I think they've been managing um, great admirably to a great extent. But I'm certain there is a perspective that Mr. Septimus Blake will share with me at this time with us that might have us sit up and take stock and pay attention. And Mr. Blake is the president of the Jamaica Bankers Association. Mr. Blake, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Faye. I'm, I'm very well, thank you. Please to be here. Glad to have you here. So what are you going to tell us that will make us sit up, take stock and say, wow. All right. So, so first of all, let me acknowledge um, the, the minister, Minister Vaz and the entire MSET team. And also my fellow participants as well. Good morning again, everyone. And I'm sure that, you know, you would have locked all your doors on the way out of your house. If you, if you left the house this morning, you would have activated the alarm on your car. You'd have looked both ways before crossing the street to get where you're going. And if you did those things, you know, almost as a condition reflects or even without thinking, I think you already have the right mindset to be a safe digital citizen. And the, the key to digital safety is essentially locking the doors and setting the alarms on your digital accounts. And the Jamaica Bankers Association believes it plays an important role. It's a key stakeholder and participant in building what I call resilience, especially as it relates to cybersecurity. And we have an important role to play. And that is so because financial institutions are on the front line every day when it comes to the prevention and also the mitigation of cybercrime. But with the risk of scams and digital fraud are not confined to banking, they impact governments, as we'd have heard before, the store around the corner, when we shop online, it, you know, it also impacts and affects our email or social media accounts, et cetera. And with over 4.7 billion people using the internet, the world, in a sense, seems to be getting smaller as we all become more connected. And every year, every almost every day, incidents of cybercrime become increasingly prevalent across the globe. Cyber attacks have grown in number and sophistication since 2020, and this has been accelerated by the pandemic. According to Forbes magazine, last year's average number of cyber attacks and data breaches was up 15% over the prior year. And we also saw a recent study by Positive Technologies, which found that attackers can breach an organization's network in 93% of cases and 71% of the time. And that's due to the use of simple passwords. So it is, in a sense, it's easier to get hacked than many of us realize. Increasing levels of connectivity mean we can talk to relatives across the globe, do our banking from anywhere at any time at our convenience, pay for goods and services in different countries, all from our cell phones. However, that convenience can be exploited by cyber criminals. And scams like social media engineering, which you, you know, over the last, I'd say, six months to a year um, would have been prevalent um, and you would have see numerous pieces of communication coming from the, the banking sector, but broadly um, in terms of you know, the, the entire financial sector, as these scams are being used to compromise um, data and online accounts. And one global security survey, which we saw recently, showed that 65% of firms were attacked by ransomware in 2021. And last month's data breach at Uber and the hacking of Twitter earlier this year showed that even large companies can be vulnerable. Access to just one person, let me repeat that again, access to just one person can compromise a company's database and lead to a host of problems so for everyone connected. And so from corporations that need to increase cybersecurity budgets, and you heard the cost of, um, you know, Breaches earlier, potential costs of breaches amounting to some 10 trillion over the next number of years. 
but from a corporation perspective, the need to increase cybersecurity budgets to match their own digital evolution to individuals who should police their own accounts and practice safe, practice safe online habits. Cybersecurity is a responsibility that we, we must all share. The good news is, however, that it's relatively, I would say, easy to stay safe online by staying updated about potential threats, how to prevent them, and by developing good digital habits, becoming far more aware, I believe we can greatly reduce our vulnerability to attack. One in three internet users is under 18. And since the onset of the pandemic, our children are spending even more time online. So consistently teaching them about potential dangers and good safety practices will help reduce their susceptibility to cybercrime. Device monitoring software is also available to give some parents, you know, a degree of control over your children's access and their activity. Some ways to keep ourselves, our children and our company safe are one zero trust, practice zero trust, approach emails and online interactions with a high dose of skepticism, zero trust. Verify first that you're dealing with a trusted source and or legitimate content or links. Take a need to know approach to share spouses, pets, or children can provide the cyber criminals with crucial information that could lead to email or SMS. And this is especially true if you did not initiate the contact. We're seeing increasing um, activities by scammers and they often use these channels for phishing. And, uh, the areas that ignore unexpected links or attachments. So avoid clicking links in email or text messages. If, if you receive an unexpected email, whether you know the sender or not, never click anything without first verifying the sender by alternate means, like a phone call. Links and attachments can carry harmful code. Use unique passwords for multiple sites. If your password is compromised on one account, Cyber criminals will try the same password to access other accounts as well. And always use a different password for each account. A good password, a strong password, has at least 10 characters and a mix of numbers, mixed case letters, and symbols. Consider a separate email for, for junk. So you create an email for promotional sign-up and recreational websites. Any spam sent as a result will not clutter up your regular inbox and you will be less vulnerable to phishing scams. It's easy to get comfortable online, but I want to reiterate that there are real dangers in the digital space. So knowing that we all share the collective responsibility of making the cyber world a safer place, let's each do our part to be good digital citizens. So let us practice good cyber hygiene or everyday lives and keep ourselves informed and aware about cybersecurity trends. So online safety is about more than reacting to threats. In our digitally connected world, it should be a way of life. So again, I wanted to wish, you know, for us a happy and secure cybersecurity month. Thank you. Hi, I'm distressed. Thank you for distressing me, Mr. Blake. You see, I was supposed to post a picture of my pets. Guilty. I post a picture of my dog and they post. <laughs> what am I going to do? But I hear you. Very important point you've raised. Very important. And I love the analogy you started off with, locking the doors and, and um, setting the alarm is what we need to do to keep out unintended, you know, persons we don't intend to have access to what we do. I was thinking, and I thought about it earlier on, Colonel, uh, during the pandemic, and you mentioned it, you know, uh, the, the rate went up in terms of cybersecurity crimes. I wonder how many of those uh, crimes were committed by enterprising adolescents or teenagers? Because I find that they are so on top of the technology that just um, ensuring or, or working on and maintaining, or I don't know, you have any, any stats on that? Yeah, but that's a, an area we could do separate. Yeah, enter, 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 enterprise and teenage, you know, they're not easy, you know. 
you know, and, and you hear the stories. There was a young man in, in England, I think it was, you perhaps remember his name better than I do, who was hacking and stuff, and then he became as a, a, the, the, was being used by a company to help them now with the whole business of hacking thing. There are several people like that. But zero trust, love it, love it, love it, love it, zero trust. And then you tell me about the unique passwords. Yeah, I know, I know. Listen to me, man. I have a whole list, but sometimes it's just so hard to remember all of these different. Yes, 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 I say I must get um, a password saver that you can trust. I know you're going to tell me all of these things. See? May I head up that but Lord Almighty, man. It's just so much that we have to do to protect ourselves. Thank you for the information, Mr. Blake. We are moving on with our wonderful presentation. And from the Bankers Association, Mr. Blake is the president there. We are now moving to the Jamaica Institute of Financial Services. And the executive director is Mrs. Darlene Jones, who has another presentation, which will get us just focused on what it is that we need to do when it comes on to these financial services. Mrs. Jones, how are you? Good morning, I'm well, thank you. Thank yes. you so much. Let me acknowledge Honorable Minister Daryl Vaz, Permanent Secretary, Mrs. Carol Blake, Head of Jessert, Lieutenant Colonel Godfrey Sterling, distinguished panelists, specially invited guests and other partners. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. The Jamaica Institute of Financial Services considers it an honor to once again be invited to give remarks at this launch of National Cybersecurity Awareness Month and to partner with Jessert on the planned activities, which are very appropriately being hosted under the theme, Cybersecurity is Everybody's Bill Responsibility, as indeed it is. As has been said before, no matter what sphere of life you are in, you're affected by cybercrime. As we've seen on social media, even the dead is affected by cybercrime. The financial services sector has always been a traditional target for cybercrime. It has been referred to in some quarters as a perfect package for a hacker. Having information that spans everything a cyber criminal wants all wrapped up in one place from financial details and bank accounts to identity data. And of course, Mr. Wint reminded us that money is now in cyberspace. And of course, you heard from our president, Blake. But what does this mean for us? It means that we have to be more vigilant in how we are cyberspace, seeking to get more safety. There is, as financial institutions and businesses adapt the latest strategies to make digital platforms and payments more secure, the nature of digital fraud continues to evolve. As the new age fraud is using more sophisticated, and innovative ways to obtain valuable customer information and login details to hack accounts. With our mandate, that's the Jamaica Institute of Financial Services, to ensure the professional development of the financial services sector. And as the professional development arm of the Jamaica Bankers Association, GIFS works closely with the Bankers Association Anti-Fraud Committee to host annual anti-fraud cybercrimes seminars, because of course, it's everybody's business. At our recent seminar held in July under the theme, Fighting the Fraud Pandemic, we were enlightened on areas such as SIM swapping, social media phishing, smishing, vishing, account rental schemes, loader accounts, and lots more. We also partner with international training organizations to provide training in cyber crimes. Of course, it is everybody's business. Let me also use this opportunity to give a shameless plug regarding our anti-money laundering and counter-financing of terrorism conference, which is scheduled for next week 
October 11 and 12, under the theme, keeping fingers on the pulse, securing the future. As Mr. Hay pointed out, this is just as critical as cyber security. We have to keep our eyes and ears on trends in order to ensure that the sector is equipped with the knowledge and skills to mitigate cyber crimes and fraud in general, thereby protecting the financial system and the country as a whole from the scourge. We must be alert, we must be agile, we must be responsive. One, Jay Johnson said, cybersecurity is a shared responsibility, and it boils down to this. In cybersecurity, the more system we secure, the more secure we all will be. Cybersecurity is everybody's business. So on behalf of the Jamaica Institute of Financial Services, I wish to congratulate the Ministry of Science, Energy and Technology for its effort to fight cyber crimes through the Jamaica Cyber Incident Response Team and look forward to our continued relationship as we seek to work together to create awareness and develop strategies to protect the economy and our country in general from cyber attacks. Best wishes on the, on the celebration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Darlene Jones, Executive Director of the uh, Jamaica Institute of Financial Services. Even the dead can be attacked. Boy, that's how she started off, eh? And then, and then you, you listed a number of things that came out of some meeting you had recently. And one of them I had to look at, at Colonel said, account to rent out schemes. Ha, huh, okay. But let me congratulate you on your upcoming conference, and I hope it will be well attended, and that the uh, what you want to get from that conference will be realized on October 11. Yes, we have to remain alert and agile. We're moving on now with our agility to the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency representative, Colonel Desmond Edwards, Director General. We're very happy that you could join us, and we're looking forward to what MOCA is doing away from pulling up people on the um, uh, Norman Manley. Uh, highly to get to the airport where they're scamming and doing bad things and you send your people in for them. Good morning. Good good morning to you, um, Faye. Um, good to see you as usual. Um, let me start by saying a good morning as well to the Honorable Minister and the team from MSET. Um, and also all our distinguished guests and participants who are on this call. Um, the celebration of this year's Cybersecurity Awareness Month holds um, significant, um, well, special consideration for the agency, um, not only because um, cybersecurity is one of our key mandates, but also because coming out of the pandemic, the explosion in the use and adoption of online technologies and the accelerated and expanded um, use um, of cyber, sorry, um, incidents of cybersecurity threat activities um, has significantly impacted us as, a, as an agency charged with um, investigating and, and mitigating these threats. Um, the statistics has been, has been covered um, is, is significant and, and eye-opening. Um, so for example, in 2021, there were additional, an additional 782 million people um, came online. And that's just um, the first two years of the pandemic. And that's twice the population of the United States, just to put it in perspective. Um, we have had um, pre pre previous speakers um, giving an overview of the total number of um, internet users worldwide, which is in the region of approximately 500 million, billion rather. Uh, this is significant. And, um, you know, this is, of course, um, as a result of the remote work, remote school, and also, as we are seeing now, remote health services that um, individuals have been um, signing up for. At the same time, we have seen an exponential increase in the global level of cyber uh, security threats. 
And by some count, this is in the region of 81% over the pre-pandemic levels. These cyber attacks in Cuba are not limited to the distributed denial of service attacks, ransomware attacks, malware, scamming, phishing, and other online-based attacks, some of which our experts have already covered. Um, here in Jamaica, um, there has also been a, a significant increase in cyber attacks on financial institutions and on various corporations. Um, not even government agencies have been spared and ministries have been, you know, uh, they were not immune, they are not immune. And over the past two years, we have seen new, numerous attempts to garner sensitive information of our citizens through breaches of critical public and private sector networks. Um, as leaders, we must recognize that disruptions due to cybersecurity breaches have the ability to decrease the flow of crucial products and services, obstruct or disrupt key economic and financial functions and negatively impact the country. At MOCA, we have noticed that in addition to the usual cyber threat actors, uh, many criminal enterprises have been increasingly shift in order to take advantage of the phenomenal growth and expansion in the digital economy and its lucrative, um, lucrative financial potentials. So we are seeing significant increases in what we term cyber-enabled crimes. The shift is also visible in the migration of offline crimes, such as money laundering and extortion into the cyber um, domain, further requiring that MOCA and other investigative organizations remain proactive and vigilant. Um, MOCA has responded by bolstering our cybersecurity detection and mitigation capabilities, including additional investments in related technologies personnel, and other resources. But as the theme of this year's Cybersecurity Awareness Month confirms, cybersecurity is everybody's, our everyone's responsibility. So we must be mindful of our own corporate and individual roles in creating and providing safe space to conduct business, certainly a to play in ensuring a safe cyber domain. This responsibility will only increase as Jamaica involves, evolves rather with cyber, within cyberspace and grows even more dependent on existing and emerging online technologies for everyday function. The chain is only as strong as the weakest link. And so recognizing that each and every citizen is a critical link in, this, in the cybersecurity chain. Stance appreciates and take ownership of the role, of their role in keeping abreast of the dangers associated with the rapid adoption of online technologies. And uh, previous speakers have, um, you know, gone in very much significant detail in, in outlining what some of these risks are. This means full awareness of the threat actors and the risk they pose. It also means implementing best practices to mitigate these risks. Uh, we collectively have to work on how we educate our population about these risks. Um, this forum is one and launch Cyber Month is one such very good example or very good effort in this regard. And we have to also ensure that cybersecurity becomes a standard component of our businesses and administrative practices, both in the private sector as also the public sector. Oftentimes, we only think about cybersecurity in the aftermath or the wake of a major cyber event. Um, and that time it's far too late. The truth is cybersecurity threats like the technological innovations that have ushered them in are here to stay. Threat actors are always looking at new opportunities. Our ability to conduct business, post events and so on are wholly dependent on technological innovations. 
We have no choice, therefore, but to prepare ourselves for this future. The responsibility then rests upon us, our citizens and our businesses to recognize and implement the relevant cyber security procedures and technologies as we try to get and stay ahead of the constantly evolving threats. Um, we have to seek to stay secure in this new normal. You asked earlier about the cost of um, cybersecurity threats, well, of, of, uh, of not being um, cyber secure. That cost is significant and oftentimes, and more so now, it could well mean business survival for private sector entities. There are um, legal um, ramifications sometimes when private data of clients are, 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 are put out there in cyberspace and it can really mean the survival of business. Um, I wanna thank the, the MSET um, team, um, um, my former colleague in the JDF, Colonel Sterling, for uh, bringing this together. Um, and I want to um, go on record to say that MOCA is fully committed to the to collaborating and working with um, MSET on others, other law enforcement entities and, and other entities who are um, a part of this um, fight um, against the cyber threats that we face as a country. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Colonel Desmond Edwards, Major Organized Crime and Anti-Corruption Agency, Director General. Thank you so much. The cyber education is so important and, you know, I'm tempted to put it together with um, our constitution. I think we should allow, um, or rather, we should put in place a policy where our children learn our constitution through school. And so they should also learn cyber literacy because that is the way of the world. You know, yeah, I really believe that. It's critical. It's critical, critical. Um, and, and, you know, you mentioned that the, the criminal enterprises are moving their operations into cyberspace. Why wouldn't they? That is where everybody do, that's where we all do our operations. So we have to be really on the ball to manage that. Before I introduce our next guest, I'd like to acknowledge people who were a videographer. We wanted to thank you for your work. And Maurice Taylor, thank you. And there were two ladies who were here at the start, and Maurice Taylor and Nadia Grant. So, you know, as a team, we make this happen. We're moving now to the Bank of Jamaica. And we have a video from the gentleman who is the governor of the Bank of Jamaica, who will address us at this time. Who, uh, we're going to listen now to Mr. Richard Biles. We have a little bit of a hiccup, but we're going to sort that out momentarily as we uh, work through. I should tell you, uh, we have, in terms of presentations, after Governor Biles, we have a representative from the University of the West Indies, then there's somebody from EGOV Jamaica. Of course, the minister will address us and then the vote of fans. So just so you know what, what, what our plans are. Okay, I think we can do this now. You're having a challenge with it? Oh boy, and we saw it earlier on. I tell you what, let us move to the next speaker and then you try and sort that out, all right? Uh, from the University of the West Indies, Mona, the Associate Dean, Graduate Studies, Faculty of Science and Technology. And I know that they must have been working and, and including in their programs over the years, the business of cybersecurity and cybercrime and would perhaps be able to give us even more data on what's been happening uh, as they look at it from the academic, uh, academic side of things. So let us ask Dr. Curtis Bushby Earl to now address us. Uh, good morning, 
everyone. Good, good morning. And good, I'm you. seeing you now. Seeing you now and hearing you. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. And let me uh, also begin by uh, acknowledging the Honorable Minister Daryl Baz and other distinguished panelists and guests. Uh, I'd also like to acknowledge, Dr. sorry, Lieutenant Colonel Godfrey Sterling, uh, head of JSERT, uh, you lady um, moderator, Ms. Ellington, thank you very much. All of the other distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, first and foremost, thank you very much for the invitation to join you this morning as you open the month-long celebrations or the month-long activities for the uh, Cybersecurity Month. And I would like to also say congrats to the government of Jamaica, the Ministry of Science, uh, the Honorable Minister, uh, just cert for all of the efforts that they have uh, been undertaking in order to increase awareness, in order to provide the various fora that they have over the past uh, few years that permits the many participants, the many stakeholders in this area of cybersecurity to engage and to discuss and to, to have these types of exchanges. It really has been um, really beneficial towards, uh, as some of the, the earlier Um, there have been a number of excellent points that have been made, excellent recommendations, excellent suggestions that have also been made with regard to keeping and staying safe online. And staying safe online, as we know, is not exclusive to staying safe online in, in the Jamaican computing over well over 10 years. At both our undergraduate and graduate levels, we have been providing courses, discussions, uh, research in the area of cybersecurity, and in particular, an exploitation machine of course, cybersecurity. And so, as I had mentioned, although cybersecurity does impact us here directly in Jamaica with various forms of attacks and some have been mentioned such as phishing uh, which are quite prevalent here in Jamaica. Worldwide there are many others that not only could affect us but they do in, uh, to some extent and so we've been looking at the at applying things such as machine learning to help to detect some forms of attacks, in particular things like botnets. Uh, why? Because botnets are still prevalent uh, worldwide in terms of the ability to launch various forms of attacks. And I would like to also make mention of where things are going. Now, as I said earlier, there have been a number of excellent recommendations and suggestions by my other colleagues on ways to keep safe. And there are also a number of very, what I believe will be very informative activities for the month of October uh, that the JSERT has organized. And I would like to say as well, we have to bear in mind that as always, things change. And we also have to try to keep abreast of where the change is going to come from. And again, activities such as these, the collaborations are all very important. And so one of the areas that we have to keep abreast of is how these things may change. So today may be fishing, uh, tomorrow may be some forms of identity theft and so, but the manner in which some of these are conducted and the tools that will be used will also change. And we will we'll see that with the advent of, for example, quantum computers, 
that one of the first and one of the primary areas that are or that will be targeted by quantum computers to demonstrate some superiority, but it will be in specific areas. One of those specific areas is in cybersecurity. And so many of the ways in which we secure our data will be vulnerable to a quantum computer attack or quantum computer's inclusion. And so we also have to keep abreast. And that's some of the things that we're also doing to play our part at the University of the West Indies uh, in the Cypher Research Group. And so we are also looking into these other ways and means in which the forms of attack, the ways in which things can happen will also change. And those changes are coming. It's really just a matter of time. And so once again, congratulations, uh, Lieutenant Colonel and the other members of the team at JASERT, uh, Honorable Minister Vaz, the other distinguished guests and all of the information the, the sharing of that information. I, I thank you again for the opportunity this morning and for what has been created to facilitate the sharing and the collaboration so that Jamaica continues to ensure that its uh, citizens and residents are fully aware of what is involved in staying safe online. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Curtis Busby Earl from the University of the West Indies is the Associate Dean, Graduate Studies, Faculty of Science and Technology. And very important point you've raised, we need to keep looking at how the forms of attacks will change. And as a, a university and at the university level, that is a part of your work to examine how these things will change. We're going now to the Bank of Jamaica. <laughs> these things happen, right? to hear the governor's uh, presentation on this matter of, remember, it's cybersecurity is everybody's responsibility. What is the Bank of Jamaica doing? How are they doing it? Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Over the years, Bank of Jamaica has worked to safeguard cybersecurity and the financial infrastructure. The John Deere system, owned and operated by is at the base of payment systems on its own financial I wish you all a successful and educational Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Richard Byers, the governor of the Bank of Jamaica. And, uh, you know, in that very succinct presentation, he made a very important point that digital currency, the ecosystem requires a robust cyber security system. Yeah, because everybody's going there, internet, digital, all of that. And so we have to ensure that 
all of that is not compromised in any way, shape or form. We're coming down near to the end of our presentation. Uh, after our next speaker, we'll have the Honorable Minister and then the vote of thanks. But now it's my pleasure to introduce Mrs. Anika Shuttleworth, CEO of eGov Jamaica. Mrs. Shuttleworth, how are you? Thank you for your patience. I am good, thank you. Good afternoon. It is afternoon now. Yes. It is indeed, my lord. It's five minutes past the day. Thank you so much. I acknowledge Minister Daryl Vaz, who is on the call, I know. Permanent Secretary Carol Palmer, the head of JASCERT, Godfrey Sterling, of course, our mother afternoon. I'm honored to have been afforded the opportunity to make remarks at today's launch of for National Cybersecurity Awareness Month, I'm a team. Cybersecurity, as we are aware, focuses on the protection of internet connected systems, such as hardware, software, and data from cyber threats. This includes the almost pervasive smart devices, and some of us are wearing smartwatches and that sort of thing. It covers a plethora of uses across various sectors. And of course, we heard from several persons this morning. So we know that there are several industries that have launched full scale into digital transformation. And this includes national security, health, education, finance, et cetera. For some, the question is not that they will adopt technology, but to what extent? This year's global theme, it's easy to stay safe online is one that must be supported locally by a vigorous education campaign on how to protect oneself online, more so given the pandemic. 3% of adults approximately agree that remote work has made it much easier for hackers and cyber criminals to take advantage of people. This is according to a report by Norton 2021. Interestingly, when I saw the theme, I thought it's quite easy to be online. Very, very easy to just jump online with your phone, your tablet, whatever it is. But it's not so easy to stay safe whilst being online. In a September 1, 2022 article titled 115 Cybersecurity Statistics and Trends to Know in 2023 by Norton.com, it reported the following. Over 75% of targeted cyber attacks start with an email. In 2020, the FBI received over 15,000 internet crime complaints from victims in 60 countries related to, to tech support fraud. The first half of 2021 saw a 102% increase in cyber crime involving ransomware, as was mentioned earlier compared to the beginning of 2020. So with obviously there is a huge increase. And a quarter of all employees have noticed an increase in fraudulent emails, spam, phishing attempts in their corporate emails, certainly since the beginning of the pandemic. These statistics validate the imperative to increase efforts to broaden and embed awareness of cybersecurity in the Jamaican population, and in particular, the age cohort 13 to 34, which according to statistica.com accounted for approximately 60% of online users worldwide in 2021. In fact, according to a report by UNICEF titled Growing Up in a Connected World, which by the way, we are in a connected world, it is estimated that one in three children is an internet user and perhaps is higher even more now. And that one in three internet users is a child under 18 years of age. Mobile phones are now the most popular devices used to go online surpassing laptops and desktop computers. Given the current initiatives to increase Jamaica's access to the internet, it is indeed encouraging that this year's focus is on four key behaviors that seek to strengthen online safety, especially given all the many services that we have now put online. Somebody mentioned earlier digital currency, that sort of thing. Mindfulness also of vulnerable groups, international demands for online services, several activities as we know for the private and public sector, sectors, to name a few. Further, as there is an, is an increase in the plans and actions towards a smart society, which by the way, we've been hearing of for a while, 
we have to be quite mindful of a number of things. Earlier, I had mentioned remote work. The fact is that we have to ensure that our employees, citizens, uh, students practice good digital habits. This includes practicing good password hygiene, and we know about the whole thing with the length of the password, not using your pet's name, sorry about that, your birth, you know, your date of birth, that kind of thing. Because the cyber criminals, they already know these things. They, they, that's the first thing that they go to. So we have to make our passwords quite rich. In as much as we know in the whole digital transformation realm, practice digital by design, that is when we are establishing our organizations, the first things that we do is how can we digitize the process, okay? We must, however, ensure that we have security by design, being mindful of data protection and data privacy. Somebody earlier mentioned about a no trust or a zero trust environment. We have to ensure that security is upfront and center. Another big one that we have to be looking out for is this whole thing about data sharing. Now, with so many different data sources all around, there are APIs, application program facilitate integration of systems. But it is crucial to understand the intricacies and security policies of each device in the ecosystem that we are sharing the data from. Insecure data storage and transfer. This is something that we have to really look at. Again, it's linked to the first point. When we think about the many devices that remain unmonitored, untracked, and just simply improperly managed, it creates a huge risk. Think about it, even in the health sector, now we're talking about having an increase in technology. Can you imagine having an IoT pacemaker when someone, where someone is able to tap in and, and you know, mess with someone's heartbeat? These are things that we need to be very much mindful of. And so organizations need to implement device management systems to monitor these devices, okay? Botnet is another big one, which is a series of interconnected devices used to create, um, to, to, sorry, to steal data, compromise networks, to send spam, et cetera. So we have to be mindful. And of course, there are so, so many other tips that we need to be mindful of as it relates to cybersecurity. And interestingly, cybersecurity is indeed everybody's personal responsibility. It is everybody, each and every one of us has that responsibility. And in fact, at Ego of Jamaica Limited, we have, we continue our program to educate our over 240 team members about cybersecurity through mandatory training. And we embed this awareness and appropriate behaviors, including our policies and so on. Sometimes we do targeted phishing attempts to see how many persons will actually respond. We do these simulation um, exercises throughout the year. And we encourage many, many more organizations to do so. Overall, we look forward to the continued implementation of the National Cybersecurity Action Plan, which includes several facets, including a national strategy, the reduction in crime, or enhanced responsiveness, intelligence for you know, investigation. Of course, just generally a whole culture around cybersecurity. We know that we all have to comply with the Data Protection Act, and so we have to be mindful of the privacy and protection of data. Thank you so very much for inviting us to share in the critical national initiative. As I said at the beginning, I am excited for this particular month of activities because it is critical to how we all operate across our various age groups or sectors, wherever it is. And we endorse the plans put forward for this event and we wish the Jamaica Cyber Incident Response Team, and indeed MSET, all the very best for a successful National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Anika Shettleworth, um, CEO of EGOV Shuttleworth, the part of EGOV Jamaica. Yes, you're reminding us that the email, we need to be very careful, right? Um, the, Mandatory training of staff, I want to congratulate you on that because there can be no excuses or reasons why you cannot attend training to do with this very important area. Because if you don't, 
and you are the loophole through which something happens, then you compromise the entire organization. Happy to hear that. Thank you so very much. I must tell you this now, we talk about smartphones, the smart cars. Can you imagine if they interfere with the smart cars? A friend of mine told me she was right here in Jamaica driving the other day. I think she said it on air. It was daily a Harris I hear talking. And the car said, not in Jamaican language, but the car said, no go no further, no go down there, because if you go down there, you can't come out in English. So, you know, can you imagine if, if the smart car or that was interfered with and said something else that will compromise her life? Anyway, it is indeed my pleasure and honor at this time to introduce the Minister with Portfolio Responsibility for this very technical and critical area. He is in another space, and I know he has tried to listen as intently as he could, but he has other duties on a Monday that he has had to attend to. I would like at this time to welcome Minister Darrell Vaz to the discussion and thank him for accepting the, recommend, the, the request rather to be the keynote speaker. Thank you so much, Minister Vaz, and good afternoon. Good afternoon, Faye. Thank you very much, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Let me take this opportunity to thank our partners for taking the time to share in this year's commemoration of National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Last year, we explored the concept of reimagining cybersecurity awareness in the context of a global pandemic. While the challenges that the high levels of hyperdigitization foisted upon us larger remains, we have definitely made progress. Through the, that progress, though small, it has led to the Jamaica Cyber Incident Response Team being fully established as a division of the Ministry of Science, Energy and Technology with the hope that it will bring greater awareness of the attack vector, attack surface area, vulnerabilities and risks associated with our citizens' cyber space use. This year, in keeping with the global theme, it is easier to stay safe online we have chosen to raise awareness about the National Cybersecurity Triad. The individual, the bodies, corporate and government. To this end, the sub-theme, Cybersecurity is Everyone's Responsibility, has been adopted with the intent of improving the awareness of all stakeholders on their actions or inactions and how this can affect, affect the nation's cybersecurity and ultimately the quality of everyone cyber experience. Ladies and gentlemen, important stakeholders in the push to raise cyber security awareness and improve cyber hygiene. It is the choices we make as digital citizens of Jamaica that will encourage responsible behavior in the cyberspace. This acceptance of our role in enriching the experience of all who must traverse this space will lead undoubtedly to more considered personal expressions in response to events, particularly on social media platforms. This will also encourage individuals to stop and think about the consequences of their actions when seeking to secure devices, to enable children, particularly teenagers, by providing them with the necessary levels of digital support and access to the internet that is essential for daily functioning when transacting business online. Through increased awareness, individuals will be able to ensure that they are not swept, swept up in trends just for the sake of it, but through contribution to online discourse that they may participate in are responsible and furthers the notion of mutual respect for others on this, in the cyberspace. Additionally, as awareness increases, persons will become better able to spot and avoid temptations as social engineering campaigns, particularly fishing, and be more empathic to malpractices such as cyberbullying and doxing. Ladies and gentlemen, if increased individual awareness and levels of cyber hygienic practices are transferred into our places of employment, everyone can become a part of the solution for increasing the cybersecurity resilience of our bodies corporate. I'll be the first to acknowledge that the legislative agenda has not kept pace with the levels of diffusion of technology. While Jamaica is not unique in this position, we can all appreciate that there's a lot of work to be done. However, companies have an inherent duty to provide facilities that are cyber secure for their employees and clients alike. In today's business climate, 
it is imperative that the companies invest in the creation of expansion of the security apparatus in-house that will treat with cybersecurity. I'm aware that many businesses have an information security footprint. However, that must now evolve into an entity that ensures cybersecurity on its behalf. Employees need to be trained to recognize cybersecurity vulnerabilities and be encouraged to report, not to exploit them. Such ventures should be ongoing and repeated. Ladies and gentlemen, where the awareness of the employees prevent the exploitation and vulnerabilities within companies, it ought to be lauded and the lessons learned shared. Similar efforts made with respect to clients often lead to a better customer experience, greater confidence in the company's ability to secure the client's data and better customer retention. Also, while there's no legislation currently in effect for mandated reporting of vulnerabilities and or breaches, I urge you all to consider the benefits of responsible voluntary disclosure of their existence. Ladies and gentlemen, security by obscurity in 2022 cannot be seen as a way to effect cybersecurity for companies. Finally, we can all agree that governments have a duty to provide the legal guide rails that are necessary for the safe navigation of cyberspace by all. The government of Jamaica is no exception. Through the JASERT, it has continued a robust program of public education and awareness in cybersecurity through the mandates of the National Cybersecurity Strategy of 2015. The program will be strengthened through the provisions of the new strategy, which is an advanced stage of development. Through JASERT, the delivery of public education and awareness sessions to organizations virtually and in person will continue. As a partnership with the Ministry of Education and new regional educational offices continue, the impact of sensitization sessions should become more evident in the actions of students, parents, and school administrations. In recognizing that responsible behavior in cyberspace is not always a case, the ability of the law enforcement agencies to deal with cybercrime is being strengthened through the Plan Secure Jamaica initiative. It has been a trying year, ladies and gentlemen, in cybersecurity for all. And based on all the projections, there is a, it's expected to be an upward trend in the most persistent of threats faced. Rest assured, however, that the ministry has not been resting. The JASER has operated cybersecurity. The security operations center is a fusion point for dozens of feet from the surface deep and dark webs that inform the threat intelligence picture, which is most relevant to the Jamaican cybersecurity threat landscape. The reality, ladies and gentlemen, is that cybersecurity, and Max mentioned cybersecurity awareness, is a team endeavor. It requires a true all of society response to continue to build resilience, improve capability, increase capacity, and imbue confidence in the users of online facilities which are critical to daily life. Therefore, irrespective of who you are and what you do, cybersecurity is everyone's responsibility. I thank you. God bless you all. Thank you very much, Minister. You are indeed right that we need to improve our cyber hygiene. And you raised a, a, a little point that is so important, neutral respect for others in cyberspace. This is so, so important. And in particular, uh, for those social media users who sometimes really go off the, the, the top and behave so disrespectfully to others, but mutual respect for others in cyberspace. And yes, we hear you that the legislative agenda is, has not kept pace, but we are hoping that there will be some work coming on stream where that is concerned. And the final thing I want to remind us about that you said, when we have everything in place as a company, as a business, and we are focused on the small, um, medium-sized businesses here, but not only them, any company, any individual, when we can treat with that in a manner that people have confidence in us, that we have put everything that we need to have put in place, then we have better customer experience and better customer retention. Thank you so very much, sir. And we wish for you, uh, the rest of a very productive rest of the day. Thanks a lot. Well, it's been quite a day.
Yes. And uh, I'm looking at Lieutenant Colonel Retired Dr. Sterling, who will now put the lid on the occasion. It's no longer morning because we've gone into afternoon at 12.25. And while you do that, if you could remind us of some of the activities that you have planned for the rest of the month. Ladies and gentlemen, the head of JASERT. Uh, thank you, Faye. And you know, we wish to extend our thanks to the Honorable Minister for taking the time to deliver the keynote address today. Additionally, we want to thank all our partners, our external partners, who took the time to continue to help us to deliver on the mandate to provide a cyber incident response capability in Jamaica that is first class, world renowned. When we look at all the participants here today. And if we start by remembering that the journey of a thousand miles begin with a single step, I can safely say that we've taken the first step. We've brought some of the most important and relevant stakeholders in cybersecurity in Jamaica today together in this meeting on this platform. And there are expressions of encouragement and commitment are reminiscent of the sort of behind the scenes day-to-day -day activities that take place among us as we seek to build resilience within the cyber ecosystem here in Jamaica. Ladies and gentlemen, the way in which we move forward is going to be very indicative of the commitments that we've made leading up to today, to today and what we have said here today. To our overseas partners, the United Kingdom, through the National Commonwealth Sea Certs Association, Canada as part of the OAS and the National Sea Certs of Americas, to the OAS, who has been a steadfast companion, we say gratitude is the attitude that we have here today. To the law enforcement agencies, JCERT has absolutely no law enforcement remit. And without them, when our triage process indicates a crime, nothing could be done. So to the Jamaica Constabulary Force, to MOCA, to the Jamaica Defense Force, we say thank you for being that enforcement arm of everything cyber in Jamaica. And we look forward to our continued effort to build resilience across the sector. To the Banking Association and the other players in the financial sector, you represent the focus of the majority of cyber incidents in Jamaica and your continued effort, your continued partnership with law enforcement and the Jamaica Cyber Incident Response Team is critical to ensuring that there is the ability to respond and to mitigate vulnerabilities where they exist. To the other partners who are here today, I want to say thank you for taking the time. Thank you for staying with us. To the members who joined as attendees and for those who are viewing the live stream, we say thank you for joining us. And I hope that you will continue to join us as we move through the month as far as our activities. There are four weeks of intense activities and our activities are essentially scheduled on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays of each week. The idea is to keep them below an hour or at an hour max. And the intent is to build on the four focus areas that Mrs. Shuttleworth would have mentioned. And we seek to do that in a way which incorporates the ability for persons to participate. So we will have three basic types of events, lecture series, webinars, and panel discussions. Week three, however, is dedicated to education in cyber. As we seek to help to build the profession, we're focusing on those career paths that are in existence worldwide and available here. We're seeking to push the idea that we can get cybersecurity training and certification to be more available, more accessible, and more affordable. In week four, we have Cybersecurity Awareness Day on October 25. And that we're hoping to be a symposium of 
what cybersecurity has evolved into over the last six or so years. And we hope to bring some of you back as partners in this endeavor. And additionally, in week four, we have our national cybersecurity exercise, CyberXJM. This year, we're seeking to target those persons who look to do security research, who think they're penetration testers, who think that they're certified ethical hackers. And we're inviting you to join us in our mini hackathon. Uh, come and gain the gems, win the competition. There are interesting prizes, including a six-month internship with the Jamaica Cyber Incident Response Team. So on behalf of the Honorable Minister, as the Permanent Secretary, Mrs. Carol Palmer, and all the main departments and agencies, our international partners, and I could not end without saying a very big thank you to Auntie Faye. <laughs> it, it, has been, it has been a very warm event through your own stamp of Faye Ellington on this event. And I want to say it doesn't come as a surprise that your interest in cyber is where it is. And I have sat on platforms with you before, and I hope to do so again as we continue to champion the cause for the older folks <laughs> as, as we push into the use of technology. But ma'am, thank you very much for taking the time to be with us today and to marshal things in the very expert and diligent way that you have. A big thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. So without much more to say, it is really to wish you all a safe rest of day as you continue in your daily activities or your journey back to your places of work and for you to join us for the remainder of the month as we seek to focus our activities on building awareness, particularly in the MSME sector. Thank you very much. Good work. Thank you. Good work to you on your teams. You want me to shake your hand? <laughs> so I haven't done this in over two years, shaking anybody's hand. <laughs> All right.